The DeForest Wireless Radio System, the DT600 Crystal Radio. Hello, my name is David Larson. I'm a electronic collector and collector of old radios and computers. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about an interesting early receiver made by Lee DeForest. These early radio units were more pieces of beautiful furniture and woodwork than they were actually, uh, well, they were radios too. Uh, let's open this up and take a look inside. Well, we've removed the cover and now you can see the radio. This is a DeForest DT600. It was a very popular crystal radio receiver uh, pre-1920. Uh, we're going to look inside, but you can see here there's very few controls. Here's the little crystal receiver unit, or detector unit, we'll talk more about that. Connections for the antenna and for ground. A couple of tuning controls, which change the tuning on some inductors inside. And so it was actually very pretty, very simple to use. This is not a radio in the sense of amplifying. It's called a passive radio because of the detector unit here uh, as a crystal detector. We're going to open up the unit and show you what's inside now. You're going to be surprised how simple this backside is. Basically, it consists of a large inductor with two tuning controls to wipe across the conductor to change the inductance, very heavy wiring, another wiper arm here at the top, and one capacitor. So it is very simple circuitry. It's a, uh, a resonant circuit, and the detector on the front side is a gallium crystal with a cat whisker. We'll look closer at that. So you didn't have to be a real skilled operator to use these radios. The uh, Lee DeForest DT600 was a, a very nice crystal radio set. Here you see the the Lee DeForest wireless uh, logo little nameplate on the radio itself. Here's the uh, crystal with the cat whisker on it. We're going to open that up and take a close look at that. Here's a crystal radio with the crystal taken apart. You see the uh, radio unit basically operated with the antenna picking up signals from the air, 100 foot wire outside, and uh, the coil inside being tuned to resonance by this knob and and the other knob and uh, one part of the coil tied to ground. Then the unit uh, detected the radio signal, AM radio signal, with a thing called a gallium arsenide crystal. Here you see this crystal over here in its holder. And we took this cat whisker right here and it was placed against the crystal and fished around on here for a place that worked best. But the combination of the cat whisker against the gallium arsenide crystal uh, formed a rectifier or detector. And that in series with the earphone allowed us to hear the radio signals. They weren't very loud, but they were useful. And crystal radios uh, were used uh, initially the only form and then later as a novelty. I used a crystal radio set a much simpler design than this in the uh, mid-40s in the third, fourth, and fifth grade to listen to radio signals at night. And uh, even today you can still build a little crystal radio and listen to AM signals. Here we've reassembled the crystal detector and we're going to show you how you would fish around that little gallium osnard there with the cat whisker. You see the cat whisker there and you would find different places on the whisker, on the uh, crystal and then you would just leave it there wherever you got the strongest signal is where you would leave it and that would be your detector the inside of the cover had the complete operating instructions showing you how to put up the antenna hook up the ground and then some operating instructions on how to tune the radio 
and a little schematic diagram down here of how to wire it together with the earphones and the ground wire and how to adjust the crystal and so forth. And the instruction manual was pretty simple for these radios but effective. They're a very popular radio during their time, crystal radio. The LCF group has an extensive historical collection of microcomputers, calculators, and radios. Our intent is to set up a museum here in Floyd, Virginia. If you'd like to be part of this by donating time or funds or equipment, contact the LCF group at the Floyd Professional Center, Village Green, in Floyd, Virginia. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoyed our little video. Thank you.